Hello. How is everybody doing? I don't want to start this show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome to uh, episode 33 yeah, of 33. the Degenerates Podcast. Wow. Wow. T- today we're going to be talking about everything else that we haven't talked about on the show yet. Yeah. Just to make sure, because next week we're going to start the super cool uh, podcast. Before the show, me and Mike were talking about how... We really like it when TV shows uh, barely talk. So next week we're going to do a podcast where we only talk for 25% of the podcast. And it'll be like random, random conversations dispersed. It'll be, it'll still be half an hour. It's going to be good. That's what we're doing next week. And for every week after that. For every week after. We're just going to cut. So we've got to talk about everything that we want to talk about now. Yeah, because we're not going to be talking, like, nearly as much later on. Yeah. Later. For no other reason other than great, other than shitty TV shows do it. Good TV shows do it, too. Yeah, but good TV shows can do it well. Yes, yeah, so, and we can do it well. We're pretty good. All right. Let's leave so it. So, what, what, what was the first thing you wanted to talk about? Oh, uh, God. Uh... Dude, what was it? Okay, John Tron made a video. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna bring up the video real quick. But it's a video okay. about fucking John Tron. It's a video about fucking. I forget who, what her name is. He, he has a company called Goop. Goop, the company. Ah yes, uh, by Gwyneth Paltrow. No, oh, I've heard of her. Yeah, so Gwyneth Paltrow has a fucking uh, brand called Goop. And Mm -hmm. not only does she sell extremely overpriced goods, she also has a fucking, like, religion? She has, like, a a fucking wellness center. Okay, it's been one minute of that... Topic. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'll come up with the next topic. <laughs> Speed uh, lightning round. Yeah, lightning round. That's what we're doing. Right. Um, dishwashers are bad. Uh, they're good, man. Uh, have you ever washed dishes by hand? Yeah. Every day, I do. Your hands get dry. Your hands aren't good. No. They aren't good. You don't wash dishes by hand. No, that's wh- that's why you just get uh instant relief hand cream. What are you talking about? Yeah, because my because I actually do have to wash dishes every single day, and I and my skin gets cracked and dry, so I just use fucking moisturizer, like a normal person. Uh, well, or or you could wait. I'm arguing that uh, dishwashers are bad, right? No, you were arguing that they're good. <laughs> you said that they were good. I said they're bad. Oh, well, okay, they're good. Just put all your dishes in the dishwasher and they're done. What's one more have you got to do? Dude, you know what? Uh, I actually, I accidentally, <laughs> I, uh, I put uh, what is it called? Like a dryer. Uh, okay, what's the next topic? Okay, dry. I put uh, dryer. What the fuck is it called? Like not Tide Pods. Wait, well, yeah, Tide. I put Tide Pods in the dishwasher accidentally. I ate Tide Pods. You're retarded. Nah, but go on. How was it? Did they taste good? Mm. They burned. Mmm. Nice chemical burns. Oh, yeah. I, I actually really enjoyed it. It's almost like eating spicy foods. But I've already got the next topic ready. Oh, my God. Yesterday, um, we got these spicy noodles, okay? Mm-hmm. And I did not think that they would be that spicy. It said that they were like, oh, 8,000 Scoville or whatever, which is just like jalapenos Mm -hmm. when I looked it up. So I made these noodles. They tasted really good. 
but they were really spicy, and I could barely eat them, and I had to get, like, four glasses of milk to eat this thing. <laughs> and then later, I still had some of the stuff on my hands, and I got a bunch of it in my eyes, uh. and I couldn't open my eyes without my eyeballs hurting, and it was awesome. Nice. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Things tend to happen, so, so like hallucinations. Yeah, I didn't know that you could like self-induce hallucinations. Cause I started. Yes, you did. No, but like, like just by like thinking about it. But you've done it before. No, 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 not no, not just visual hallucinations. I got like ta- oh. I got like tactile hallucinations, like full body tactile hallucinations. Oh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's fucking weird. <laughs> and so essentially, all you gotta do is you gotta actually know your body well enough. Because I know, I know the, uh, the uh, somatosensory cortex pretty well. And so I know how this shit kind of works. And so how, how I actually got my hallucinations to stop was by running my fingers through my hair. And then that made, this, that made it stop. So I figured out how to actually like uh, like fix it, like right after it started happening. Is by running your fingers through your hair? Yeah, through my hair. And then the hallucinations like stop. But I can also just visual like visualize the hallucinations, uh, like funneling into a spot on my forehead, and like that's where it stays. You know what, uh, we should hire people who will do stuff for you. Like, you won't even have to run your fingers through your hair anymore to stop the hallucinations. You will be able to just hire someone who to do that for you. We need to, and you, they won't even have to pay them. They'll do it for free. We should start something like that. We should start a business. But if they do it for free, then how do we make money? <laughs> uh, <laughs> from, well, they pay us. Okay. Uh, but they don't pay the they, they buy. So we have they buy the people from us, oh. <laughs> and that's how it works. Then they don't have to pay after they buy them the first time. Okay, it's a pretty good deal. One time investment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, 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 I'd buy that. <laughs> I, I don't think I would, but I'd sell it. Don't worry. Right, right. <laughs> So when you were a kid, you used to, you used to get like little like visions and whatnot, didn't you? You would like have your imagination go wild, and you would be like, "Whoa, I'm seeing things!" Right? Like in my head? Yeah, in your head. Well, yeah, that still happens. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh. Napkins. 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 I don't. Napkins are pretty good, actually. I like napkins. Napkins help me stay clean. Refrigerators. Dude, my refrigerator is... Is running. Is running. It is. <laughs> I have two refrigerators. One well, of... you better go catch it, then. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Also, there's speed. I th- okay. I think the speed round is over. Oh, okay. I'm getting tired of switching. Yeah. Okay. Topics. So there's this <laughs> fucking really cool shit going on. I had no idea that. Uh, I think I talked about this a while ago, but it's still like it's just a renewed interest. You can fucking grow rat neurons and have it be a fucking computer chip. Oh yeah, you've talked about this on the podcast. Oh, it's fucking before. so weird. But also, not even just that, you like you can actually like plastically enhance your own brain. You can plastically enhance your brain. Yeah, by doing specific things that actually make certain circuits stronger, you can get better at stuff. So if you just read uh, like really complex clocks, like clocks that tell the hour, the day, uh, the year, and you know, the month and all those things. You can get, like, a really complex clock that tells time very specifically. Uh, and then if you learn how to read those clocks, you actually get super good at uh, relating symbol to, uh, like, meaning. So you can, like, like the area. So you get basically just get better with language and things like that. So what you're saying is if you do things, then your brain will get better at doing those things. 
Exactly. Oh yeah, I think uh, lots of people do that. No, though. but it's super, but it's like we actually know like what exactly we can we have to do now. It's like because like if you have trouble with uh, with uh, it, like some a problem that I have is being able to like actually recall information. If you just if you it literally the fix is just memorize shit, and then that actually makes your memory stronger. And that's yeah. what priests used to do. Priests used to do that shit, but now we don't do that anymore. Priests used to memorize the Bible. But now we don't do that. We don't memorize as much. E- well, it's because we don't need to. Because we just need to study right before the thing happens. And then once we take the test, it doesn't matter anymore. We just no, forget it. dude, it matters. You need the information. <laughs> well, uh, that's not that's not the way they're teaching us in schools. Nope. It really isn't. I think that schools really should have, like, a way... Like, think about it. Schools were probably so much better a long time ago, but now they're kind of shit. Because, like, a long time ago, students could actually interact with the learning shit. Nowadays, you can, but you have to wait until you get into higher levels of education. You have to wait until, like, your third fucking year in university. Oh. How many years of university have you been there? Is this your third year? This is my third year. Three and a half. Oh, so so you're you're in the third year then. You're able to do stuff with real things. Yeah, right? I'm able to do stuff with real things. But I couldn't do that for such a long time, and I love doing shit with things. I, I know everybody loves doing shit with things. Yeah, so why don't we do that at a, at a young age? Why don't we do that when we're younger? Why don't we... Uh, because... Mm-hmm. Uh, because kids are stupid. No, dude, they can be so much smarter. <laughs> Literally, they could be so much smarter. There's a thing with rats in enriched environments. What do you think happens to kids who have to sit on their ass for six hours a day and do nothing except learn shit? Uh, what happens is their brain, their neuroplasticity, learns to sit around and do nothing all day. Yeah, it literally brainwashes them into being mindless automatons who just, like, do that shit. Mm-hmm. But then, if you have, like, more active learning, then these kids will actually become active adults. Instead of, like, passively sitting on the couch eating Cheetos all the time. And that's why we need Sudbury schools. Yeah, those schools. Those are the schools where you, like, learn, uh, where you can, like, it's self-directed learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of, uh, like, entrep- like successful entrepreneurs come from that. Yeah, uh, I, I remember I heard, I, I did talk about Sudbury schools a little bit last time, mm-hmm. but not much. Yeah. Um, there was, uh... There was a school that was, like, it, it was in England... And it was a school that all of the bad kids got sent to, basically. Like, all the kids who kept getting kicked out of schools, uh, it was like, they get sent to this school. Okay. And it wasn't a Sudbury school, though. And then they changed it to a Sudbury school. And before they changed it to a Sudbury school, the rate of children who went to that school who ended up in prison at some point in their lives was 100% and after after it became a Sudbury school the amount of children who grew up to be in prison was brought down to 0% they were not in prison at any point in their lifetime oh my god that's awesome and uh, a lot of them did end up being fairly successful Yeah, dude. Enriched but environments. The, that's what the that argument, is. the an argument uh, against that though, could be that maybe children who have uh, problems with uh, learning in groups and might get kicked out of school, uh, that might be just a good way for them to learn, and other students might need uh, the way the school systems are already set up in order to thrive. Mm. With yeah. di- because I'm not, there's different I'm not saying we just yeah. get rid of government education, but I'm saying don't if you don't have to, don't use it. Mm. 
Because education, even if it's, like, this shitty government education, it's still education. Mm Mm-hmm. But if you have your kids go to a school where they actually learn shit, then they can act, and they actually do shit, then they can actually become successful. And so, you gotta work to get up to that level where you can actually send your kid to that school, but if you do, then your kid's gonna be super fucking epic. And since since the whole thing works uh, democratically at the Sudbury schools... They don't, uh, if a student wants to do something, like, I heard a story about a kid who wanted to sell, like, chocolate bars at, at, at school, uh, to make some money, but in order to do that, uh, everyone had to vote on whether they wanted this, uh, chocolate bar stand or whatever, uh, at the school. And even if, uh, students getting suspended... Everyone at the school has to vote on whether they should suspend the student. And something that was pointed out in the video I was watching was that that probably teaches kids that their vote matters. Mm. Uh, Because lots of people today uh, probably don't feel much like their vote matters. But then if you get kids taking part in voting on things that actually matter when when they're young... Then uh, it it might uh, yeah it might give teach, like an teach. enhanced sense of purpose or like you know yeah the, yeah the meaning of mm-hmm. your vote is greater yeah mm-hmm. yeah that sounds like summary schools sound pretty cool I just don't know the actual content of what they would be learning because I know uh, one one example of what they could learn is that some kid just want to learn windmills want to learn what windmills did and then he just fucking got to build an entire windmill and like learn everything about him mm-hmm. so like but that shit yeah. is resource intensive like if you want to get a fucking like 12 year old kid to build a windmill it's like you gotta have a lot of yeah I'm not sure if uh if they're gonna be building windmills yeah. but they can learn about windmills we could probably go to a windmill farm Hmm. See the windmills? Yeah. Ask the guy who does windmills what's going on with these windmills, dude. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that the way that we teach kids is okay for teaching adults, honestly. But I don't think it's as good for teaching kids. No, it's definitely not good for teaching kids. I think I think kids need a little more freedom. Kid, well, kids need a little bit more freedom, but they also need a little bit more engagement. Mm-hmm. Like they just yeah. like we just need teachers who actually know what they're doing, who will engage the children in discussion. Discussion is probably one of the most important ones. But also, you know, like an act of act of learning. So they need to actually do things. Mm-hmm. So, like, they need to actually do science. If they're going to learn about science, they should be. They should do science. I think that the shit in high school, we should be doing that when we're kids. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the science experiments that we were doing in high school could be done by little kids exactly yeah except maybe maybe when we made soap maybe that would be like a higher thing well, cuz uh, cuz it's lye and yeah. uh, you can get badly burned from that yeah, don't but like kids we were mixing it. we were mixing uh, these things together to make sense like different smells yeah. like the same the same way that they would like flavor a perfume or something mm-hmm. and we were doing that and i remember that was pretty safe yeah yeah definitely sure like they could do stuff like that mm-hmm. as pretty i don't think they're super hard experiments i think they're relatively simple oh yeah well making soap isn't that hard it's just it's not safe for kids yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but they could also like what else could they do they could There's probably, huh, I'm gonna, how the fuck would you teach psychology to a kid? I don't think you could. I don't think psychology is something that is really easily understandable to children. Well, 
<laughs> they teach they don't teach kids psychology in public school, but they teach like social sciences. <coughs> yeah, I guess it'd just be based on like what they've discovered and whatnot. Yeah. So I guess you could just be like, okay, here's Freud. He discovered the unconscious. And oh. well, they wouldn't really. It probably wouldn't be really uh, about psychologists. It would be more like uh, talking about uh, like w- oh, seeing, the actual sh- content. Yeah, like observing psycho, like what's going on in real life. I guess. Mm, yeah. Uh, that that's probably the most a kid could do, and kids can be very good at that. Mm. Yeah, kids kids can be really good with understanding uh, nonverbal behavior. It's like that's mm. like a secret superpower that some kids have. They're just really good with <laughs> behavior because yeah. they've been doing it for their entire life. Like that's what kids have been doing. Yeah, it's pretty. Pretty cool stuff. But yeah, we just get kids, do a little bit of chemistry, maybe do some biology, do a little bit of, you know, dissect a frog, whatnot. Yeah. I think shit, like, uh, for the, like, you know, recreational, like, sports centers? I think those are popping up, but for, like, sciences. Recreational export services? No, recreational, uh, like, sports S- oh sports yeah oh, it's like okay. sport buildings and whatnot i think they're d- doing the same kind of idea but for like stem stuff for stem cells for stem stuff so like science or wait no science technology engineering math oh uh, okay they're making like science gyms yeah for like uh so like for kids who don't want to do stupid recreational shit, they can do awesome science stuff and mm-hmm. like learn how to do like because the end because the engineering stuff that'd be pretty easy. You just have the kids do a little bit of math, but then you also have them like build stuff. You what? What would they build? They bu- they probably build little. Uh, I don't know exactly, but it would be probably something, like, simple made out of wood. Like, something that you can just connect or some shit. And then they can sell it. Yeah, they could... Yeah, if it's a little little pulley system or something like that. Just you yeah. take it home, use it, maybe make a can crusher. I remember making can crusher. That shit was good. Do you remember Yeah, can- I remember... I remember the can can crushers. Yeah. I never made one, but I remember friends made them, and mm-hmm. you could crush a whole bunch of cans in one in one thing. Yeah, it was pretty. They were pretty. That was that was some engineering shit right there, dude. It's like you make. It's like make a fucking tool. It's like awesome. I remember my friends. They also made uh, these little. Uh, speaker things that when you push a button it made like a high pitched oh, the, noise. Yeah, the whoop uh, whooper. I forget what it's called. Yeah, I made <laughs> one of those too. It was pretty cool. Yeah, like mm-hmm. that that kind of shit. Like that shit's fucking interesting to kids. It's like make something fucking make something that works. It's like whoa, dude, it fucking works. I think that's why a lot of kids like uh. Like, uh, like, wood shop and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, like, they don't know of oh. the other side of the story. It's like, they could do the same thing they're doing, but with other things. Something that I do remember, now that you bring up wood shop, mm-hmm. something that was really weird, that I think might have been kind of dangerous, but whatever, uh, there, in kindergarten... Uh, we had a whole bunch of different stations, uh, at, like, playtime that we would go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was, there was, like, a wood shop station where you, there was, like, a little saw and you could cut wood, uh, and a hammer and you had nails and stuff. Mm-hmm. Now that I think back on it, it might be a little, might seem a little weird, but I remember that. You, you there was a little wood shop space. Like, for actual wood? Yeah, well, you wouldn't build anything, but you'd be able to cut wood and stuff. Cool. With, like, a saw. 
<laughs> How the fuck would a little baby, a little kindergartner, fucking cut wood? Uh, most, I, I, I only went to that station like once or twice. Most people didn't go to that station, honestly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like, yeah, I don't like the saw. Is scary. <laughs> yeah. It's loud. No, it's not a chainsaw. It was just a normal handsaw. Oh. Yeah, but it's still loud because like... That's how it sounds when it goes in. Oh, oh, well, it's not that loud compared to how loud kindergartners are. Oh, yeah. I guess. Fair enough. (laughs) Yeah, kindergartners are fucking like... Like, the worst kind of... The worst kind of kid is sixth graders. Hands down. Sixth graders. Sixth graders. Because right now they're, like, getting amped up. It's, like, right at that point, they're starting to get, like, really excited, really, like, oh, fuck. Like, they don't want to listen to people. They like doing their own thing. They get rebellious. (laughs) If they're smart, they become a smart ass. Yeah, I remember. I remember grade six, actually. That wasn't that bad, because that was when I started spending none of my time at home. So my parents, I probably wasn't even that loud at all. Hmm. <laughs> they probably didn't even notice I was there. <laughs> See ya. It's like, not even. Nothing, dude. you just ghost wandering through the house. Occasionally no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be in the house. That's that's why. No. You're just a ghost wandering outside of your house. Exactly, like Whoa. far away from the house. Yeah, doing some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. There's a lot of really cool shit. Also, I noticed that the thing. Okay, so I. A little while ago, I said that I was going to be doing something with a professor of mine. Uh-huh. And this professor, uh, I'm not going to say their name or anything like that. But this professor, I sent her something. Fuck. I sent something that I probably shouldn't, that to any other fucking. Oh, well, now that you're talking about it uh, on the podcast, I got to put a link to the thing you're talking about in the description so people know what you're talking about. Nah, it's probably fine. No, I'll put a link to the, I'll put a link to what you wrote. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> sure. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. If I sent the thing that I wrote to anyone else, I would probably be like, you know, called out for it. I don't know why I sent it to her. I sent it to that professor. But I did, and they actually liked it. For, uh, or they liked the fact that I also did not like the universities very much, or the way that we learn. And the fact that there's it, we're so super-duper liberal in university, I, she... And, uh... Yeah, now we're working on something together. Now we're going to be working on, you know, can personality predict, uh, like, SJW behavior. Because I don't see anything. I don't see anything on, like, actually linking those two things. Except for a few studies of just introversion and extroversion. But, you know, I want to see if it correlates with, like, a memory test or something like that. See if, like the content of what you remember when you have a different personality type is different, and would that actually lead you to remember SJW things over, like, regular, normal person things? Oh, I think that, uh, it... It it can come from, uh... Inferiority complex, usually, and, uh, wanting to feel like you're useful and, like, you're helping people. Hmm... Could That's where I think it. a lot of that comes from. <laughs> I think it might come from arrogance. I don't think so. Hmm. I think it definitely comes up differently in, among different people. Because there are people who are like, you know, they feel that they just want to be a part of something bigger. There are other people who just want to, like, change the world. There are other people who just want to call out bigots 
and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, the the actual kind of SJW1 is depends on Mm -hmm. some factors. But I want to see if I can tell which kind of, what kind of SJW are with personality and memory tests. Mm. Mm. Well, let's, I want to take the test and see what kind of SJW I am. Sure. Yeah. Once I find, once I find a couple scales, I'll put something together. It's because it's probably just going to be like a little Myers-Briggs personality thing, uh, a memory, a multiple memory test, something like that. Uh, okay. if you remember with like a different kind of memory, typically it's like declarative. It gonna, it's going to be just like one of those Buzzfeed quizzes then. Uh, it's going to be an actual quiz with scientific merit that has been with a test that has been validated and is reliable rather than a mm. stupid Buzzfeed quiz. These tests are actually going to mean <laughs> something when you take them. That's the difference. Okay. And when when you make it, then we can uh, post it, a uh, uh, link to it on the podcast. Exactly, yeah. And everyone can do it. Then you get yeah, I w- a sample size of, like, five people. Yeah, I want to see if it gets... <laughs> I want to see if fucking Twitch people... If fucking, like, Twitch chat is, like, if they're a different kind of person or something like that. Okay. Because Twitch chat is fucking, like... Have you ever seen Twitch chat? It's fucking weird. Everybody's I've just seen t- the videos... Where a Twitch chat will play a video game. Oh, yeah. Those are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, like Twitch plays Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool when you can get, like, the community in on something. But then, typically, if you have so much people, it doesn't even do anything. You're just stuck. Everybody's... Well, they beat Pokemon, didn't they? Did they? I'm pretty sure they beat it. I thought they couldn't even get it off the ground um they beat a few they beat a mario game like that oh shit yeah they, after mario 16 64. days they beat pokemon red yeah yeah they they beat quite a few video games oh, uh, with just twitch chat that's fucking awesome dude that's so cool yeah <laughs> And technology can really make things super fun. We just have to use it in a fun way. Well, it's been it's been over half an hour. Yep, I guess it's probably time to call or quits. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next week we will be back, and we will not talk for seventy five percent of the show. We'll just fill. Yep. We'll fill in the gaps with other. With stupid shit that no one cares about, like sex. Yeah, we will only need to record for like uh, what five minutes. Then we just intersperse uh, our conversations that we had throughout. Yeah, it'll be the quickest recording session we've ever done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, efficiency. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye. Boy.